It's Dom Giordano filling in on the Lou Dobbs Show. Hey, welcome in, everyone. It is Dom sitting in for Lou today, and one of our favorite guys to talk with, Congressman Ron Paul, is with us. Congressman, welcome back. Good to talk with you. Thank you, Don. Good to be with you. Congressman Paul, no one is ever going to accuse you, certainly, of pandering to anyone, but particularly in the middle of Hurricane Irene, where I think, by and large, the government response up and down the line was decent or good, you're calling for us to take a look at getting rid of FEMA. Well, that hasn't been on the top of my agenda. You know, a few other things like the Fed and more. Yeah, and that. yeah, yeah. It's not my big deal. But in a way, this is connected to the debt. I mean, they they run up a huge debt. I think they're close to twenty billion dollars in debt. But it's the principle of what they call government insurance. It's not insurance at all. It's it's a form of uh, transfer of payments. But when the government gets involved in insurance, they usually get people to do things they wouldn't have done otherwise. So insurance is a very important part of, of the market economy. It measures risk, whether it's life insurance or car insurance. But flood insurance and wind insurance is very important. But if people want to build in those risky areas, and I know all about it, my district is in there and my house right. is in, this, in these areas, and uh, if if the cost goes up, that the market is telling you there's something dangerous about it. But when the government comes in and panders to people through the politicians and say, oh, it's too expensive, we're going to take care of that for you, guess what? They overbuild in the low-lying areas, and uh, then they run out of money, and people who don't live here or maybe not enjoy the beach, uh, a beachfront, they have to bail those people out that, uh, you know, build in those areas. So I think it's bad economics. I think it's bad morality. I don't think it conforms with with the Constitution, so a few of those are a few of the reasons. Why yeah, that's I a few big of it. Let, let me let me pin you. That's one part, the insurance part. But what about the FEMA to the rescue part? Do you seem to say this cuts against us doing for ourselves? Well, you know, when uh, when they proposed some of this heavy spending a few years ago, when the hurricanes were hitting Texas and Louisiana. I said, I could support the funding since, uh, you know, the system's been ingrained and people have paid insurance into it. We should make, we should try to work it out. But what I propose is that you cut twice as much of the money that you need from some of this overseas expenditures, put half of it to the deficit, and take care of some of our people home. I have the same transition programs, you know, for health care and, and mm-hmm. the elderly, you know, and not use them as the, the place where we cut first. So I, I think there's a way you could do this. But also, you know, some of the personnel that the states might use are overseas. Our guard units, you know, our National Guard, mm-hmm. too often been sent overseas. And our governors are supposed to have access to them to take care of their own emergency. I just don't believe in central economic uh, planning through a bureaucracy in Washington has anything to offer. Okay, I got you on that. Now, Congressman, we're coming up on the 10th anniversary of 9-11, uh, just a week from this Sunday. Give me your sense 10 years in, because in some of the debates, I remember in 2008, 2008, uh, you were, were kind of critical when some of that question came up about September 11th and the attack on us. Do you have the same feelings? Well, I don't think we've learned a whole lot, uh, because uh, our foreign policy hasn't changed, and I follow closely what Robert Pape and James Feldman has uh, produced out of Chicago on all their research of everybody who's ever committed, that they could find and document, committed, uh, 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 you know, suicide terrorism. And uh, this uh, shows that uh, p- people commit suicide terrorism, the real threat to us is uh, a reaction to our occupation of their land, just as we would respond if China or Russia had military bases on our land, we'd be livid. And, and without an understanding there and just going after sanctuaries, which is every place in the world, at the same time, the more people we put overseas looking for sanctuaries, the more innocent people get killed, and the more the numbers grow on those individuals who sure. would like to do us harm. Is your position then, if we would just remove ourselves from these countries in the Middle East, you think we would not have to worry about these attacks? Well, if you look at the statistics uh, before we went in in '03 into Iraq, there was never there was no record of the Iraqis committing suicide terrorism. Uh, you know, and by uh, the year 2000, I think there were three or four hundred attacks, 
you know, in Iraq against American Mer- Americans uh, ourselves or their allies. So no, the statistics are overwhelming that uh, th- this is the case. So uh, before we go in, and and also they show that when you leave, suicide terrorism and terrorist attacks against us uh, dramatically is uh, are they're dramatically diminished. That doesn't mean that you know tomorrow if you announce you're leaving that uh, we're safe and sound, but. If we would extricate ourselves from the Middle East and not have troops and not support dictators that, that the local people detest, uh, yes, I think we'd be much safer. Congressman Ron Paul, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Lou Dobbs program, as always. Good to talk to you.